Second question is in regards to the COVID vaccine. What yeah. do you think about the COVID vaccine? All right, that's a good question. We're living in a, that's a present truth question, right? All right, that's a question for the time now present. All right, so the COVID vaccine, what do I think? I like the way she phrased that question because I'm gonna give my opinion on it, what I think. I don't know everything that, that I'm not the Lord, but, but let me give you my, my opinion on that. All right, okay. I was never, <laughs> I was never a person that, when I came to the faith, that is, that really believed hard in vaccinations. And so when I raised my, when we raised our children, we didn't do it. We always used as far as school and things, or, or, or work or anything, religious, the religious ex exemption statute that was in every state. Now I did look up California and I found out there is no such thing in California. California does not have a religious exemption. So that's pretty tough for people in California. Um, but you could check me out though. But in the states that I lived in, they did. And so what we would do is we would write a letter and state the statute that because of religious reasons, we are not going to have our children have the vaccination. And my religious reasons was this, because at that time I knew they were putting mercury in the vaccines. Uh, that's widely known, it's not a conspiracy. Is that widely known? It is. They were putting uh, um, afterbirth. Um, yep. A mercury. Yep. Uh, after birth, they were putting, you know, all these things that the Bible deems unclean. So that was my excuse. That was my religious excuse. And the state always honored that. But this is how they honored it. In every state that we lived in, it was like that. They said the law states that, <clears throat> yes, you, you have a choice. You don't have to get the vaccine. But if you don't get the vaccine in regard in cases of pandemics that's what the law says in cases of pandemics your child can't go to school so i thought that's fair well they given me my choice i don't have to do it but in a pandemic your child can't be here that i th that's fair so i have to give them some understanding if they're going to give me some understanding is that right so it's like this you know um i can't go in your it, this is their house so I can't go, if I go to your house and you say, Brother Marlo, can you take off your shoes when you come to my house? And I say, no, you're taking away my rights. <laughs> I can't say that in your house. Is that right? I have to honor that in your, in your house, right? So I thought that that was fair. And so all of a sudden this COVID-19 thing comes. And I got to tell you, brothers and sisters, I've never seen any like this in, anything like this in my lifetime. How about you? This thing is a global pandemic people are dying I know people that are suffering with this stuff it's real and I like to breathe you like to breathe this thing attacks your lungs and brothers and sisters even if you recover it, 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 it leaves a mark on your lungs until you die you are hurt from it it's not like anything we've ever seen this COVID-19 thing it's wicked and so, brothers and sisters, when this came in, when this came up, I, it, it, it made me have to restudy this thing. And then I looked in Matthew 24, and this was, this is exactly what Jesus was talking about when he said pestilences. Because a pestilence is, some, is a disease that comes from animals. And that's exactly what COVID-19 came from. This, this is exactly what Jesus was talking about. This is not something that, you know, it's a lot of things people say, oh, man made this up, and man came up with this in a laboratory, and it, regardless of all that, Jesus said it was going to happen. And it's here. So we can't ignore it. Is that right? This is prophecy being fulfilled in our days. And so I had to look hard on it. I said, Lord, what am I going to do? I, let me look at this thing. So I looked at it, and I looked at, brothers and sisters, what Pfizer Biotech was doing with their vaccine. I looked at what Moderna was doing with their vaccine, and I looked at what Johnson & Johnson and another one as, as, as... AstraZeneca. Uh, say it again? AstraZeneca. Okay, he said it. That's in, 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 in uh, England, right? So I looked at these vaccines, and I zeroed in on Pfizer and Moderna, and I found something. I found something. When I looked at the Pfizer... And the Moderna thing, especially the Pfizer, I looked at it and I found that they, uh, the scientists came up with this new mRNA technology. You heard of that? Well, with this technology, I looked at the data, the scientific data. I didn't look at some article. I wanted to look at the data. So I looked at that, and it's hard to read, but you just got to have a dictionary next to you, you know, but you can do it. And so 
I, I read the data, brothers and sisters, and what I found out was this, that this new, it's a new technology. This technology, they have never, they have never done this with vaccines. This new technology, uh, the, 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 the vaccine, does not contain in any least bit part of the disease, of the virus. It doesn't have the COVID-19 virus. And also, when it goes into the cell, it does not go into the nucleus, thus, thus altering DNA. It does not altering, alter DNA at all. Another thing I found out about it is, it's vegan. They actually use those words. There's no animal product, there's no uh, afterbirth, there's no pig, there's no swine. And so I looked at the information and I said, I don't have a choice, I don't have an excuse. I can't use the excuse that I used before. That you know, I'm doing it because of unclean things and vaccine. I don't have that excuse anymore. So I had to think hard about this thing. And I thought about the eight laws of health. The eight laws of health. The eight laws of health are preventatives. You know that, right? They're preventatives. As a matter of fact, the spirit of poverty pushes this notion. It says prevention is better than what? Come on, nobody know that? Y'all know that? I I'm going to say it then. If you don't know it, it's okay. You don't have to know it. Let me say it. If you look, read the Spirit of Prophecy, especially the book Ministry of Healing, it promotes this concept. Prevention is better than cure. It's better to, be, to prevent a virus or a disease on you than to have to cure it when you got it. Is that right? So prevention is better than cure. And brothers and sisters, that's exactly what a vaccination does. It's for preventing something so that you won't have to seek for a cure. It's for preventing. So I looked at this thing and I said, wow, Lord, this is incredible. And so I started read, looking, for the, looking for answers in the spirit of prophecy. And I found out that Ellen White says nothing about vaccinations. You know that? She don't say one word about it. But I did find a person who did write about what Ellen White did in a pandemic. And that's widely known. Now, there's a story, and I can get this quote to you, but it's not from Ellen White, but it's a, 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 sister, a man that knew Ellen White and knew of the situation. Remember, Ellen White lived during the smallpox pandemic. She lived during the smallpox pandemic. And, and so when the smallpox pandemic came, this man said that he knew that Ellen White got the vaccine. And she not only got the vaccine, she told the workers that worked around her that they need to get it too. She encouraged them to do it and they did. They did brothers and, and let me tell you something, Ellen White took the smallpox vaccine, the one that was, was bad, the one that had the stuff in it that was unclean and all these, she did that. So what, what excuse I got? She did it. Now brothers and sisters, I also find certain things in the spirit of prophecy that certain things that she said we shouldn't do on a normal basis, under emergencies, you may have to do. For instance, she said people with extreme anemia, you about to die, and it's an emergency situation. She said take a raw egg and drink it, and that'll save your life. And I've seen that happen with people before. Now, I don't eat eggs. I don't eat dairy. But under extreme circumstances, emergency, do that. Get them something. You see what I'm saying? Just like if somebody suffered with low, a low blood sugar, and they faint, and we better, be, we better get them something in their, in their system to revive them. Is that right? She even said on one time on the ship, now she calls uh, uh, us coffee a narcotic. Is that right? Coffee is a narcotic. We shouldn't be drinking coffee on the regular. It's a drug. But it was on the ship. Something happened, and it was an emergency. Give them some coffee. It was needed. So certain things in emergencies you may have to do that you don't do on a normal basis. On a normal basis. You see what I'm trying to say? And so Ellen White took the vaccine, and, and it, was, it was an emergency. It was a pandemic. She did it. And so I said to myself, wow, if she did this because of this and, and all these different things, then I really don't have an excuse. And then I saw one more thing, and I'll, and I'll finish the question. One more thing I saw. I looked, at, I looked at diseases like polio. Remember, polio was a pandemic in the world. What about uh, a smallpox during the time of Ellen White? Uh, 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 what was that disease? Cholera, cholera, um, cholera, pandemic, you know, measles, pandemic. Say again? The mumps, pandemic. Guess what, brothers and sisters? We don't have those issues today with those diseases. You know why? Because of vaccines. 
That's true. You can't argue that fact. You can't argue it. Now, brothers and sisters, look. Um, it's your choice. It's your choice to do it or not. Now, another thing I found out was that, let me see here. I lost my, my train of thought here with this vaccine thing. Um, another thing was this, brothers and sisters, look. Oh, here it is. I got it back. I got it back. Vaccines, what man is trying to do with vaccines, they have not always been perfect, right? With their vaccines. They have not been perfect, right? Um, it is always room for improvement, but they're learning. See, man, what man has done with their vaccines, what they're trying to do is imitate the immune system that God made. That's what they're trying to do. See, God gave us the immune system, and it acts like this. If, if we're susceptible to some disease like chicken pox or something like that, we get it. Now, the, the way the immune system works is the next time it spots it, it has antibodies that will fight it off. Is that right? right? And so you don't get it. That's what God, man is trying to imitate with vaccines. That's not a good thing. That's, I mean, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. So they're just trying to do that. Now, on the way in doing that, they have made mistakes because it's a learning process, unfortunately. So they have made mistakes. So don't think that, you know, scientists are out to kill you with it. They may make mistakes, but they're trying to do a good thing. Is that right? They're trying to do a good thing. And so for me, when I read all of that evidence, I don't, it's not, it's, I, I don't have no excuse to, to not get it. They, they're going to start making these RNA vaccines more often in the future now. And one of the reasons why they did that is because they knew that it was a growing population of people like us who do not take vaccines and people like uh, in the world who do not take vaccines. So they tried to come up with something that, that, that was not offensive to us. And to me, this RNA thing was the best thing that they could come up with. So, yes, I got the vaccine. I got it in April and I was fine. I got the Pfizer one. To me, the Pfizer was the best one. No, no side effects. All you got to do is drink water before you take it and make sure you, you take it on a full stomach, you know, and you'll be fine. And your arm hurts for maybe a night. And that's it. I did it, brothers and sisters. Why? Because I believe prevention is better than cure. Prevention is better. I, I want I like breathing. I really do. And I don't want I've been I've been seeing what this thing has been doing to people and brothers and sisters. I'm a believer now. I did it. I did. I don't think it's taking away my rights or anything like that. I think it's helping me to live. I have no issue with the vaccine. So I can't tell you to take it. You know, God, God impressed me for, through study to take it, but he may impress you not to do it. I don't know. Depends on your specific situation. So I would never do that, you know, to, to try to force people, you know, I think you should do it or whatever. That's up to you. All I'm saying to you is trying to give you enough evidence to make the right decision for your life. You don't want this thing. You don't want this COVID thing. This thing is deadly. You don't want it. And you don't want to spread it to others. So that's what I think. I, 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 you know, I, I want to preach the gospel. And so if I can practice, and let me tell you something real quick. In 2020, when this thing came out, the whole 2020, we were locked down. Remember, we were all locked down. We was all in the house. We was locked down. I did, the vaccine was not available. I did vitamin D, vitamin C. Uh, I did... Um, uh, so many other things, uh, 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 vitamin A, I did, did, a, did a whole uh, uh, multivitamin. I did all of that, not every day, but like every other day or, you know, skip a week or something like that. And I did it and that really maintained me. So that was a preventative, but I got the vaccine to have a stronger preventative. And I still do that. So that's me. That's me. So any, any, that, that was, that was it. Okay. That was good. All right.